But yeah, now we are live with the stream, and now we're gonna D and D, guys. Hope you're ready. Well, Job, you're you kind of making your character right now. So what have I, you? I can join a little later. Don't yeah, worry. No, no, <laughs> no worries. Uh, do you have a name for your character? I can write it up. It, yes, it's Buddy. Buddy, the yeah. most uh, terrifying barbarian name, Buddy. Yeah. Buddy. Oh wow, you were you were very low, Haku. Uh, tuning up. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a different room. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe you can, do you ha you can change the settings on Discord, you know, increasing or lower it. Uh, and um, yeah, don't those that can talk can talk, and those that can't can write in the chat. That is how we set this up because I know everyone cannot um, uh, talk and all of that. So there's no worries about that. And with that, we have our setting. We are in the world of Grandor, and. Uh, yeah, you're you're all part of a smaller group of mercenaries. That is the premise of things. Uh, oh yeah, I'm still missing people in voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well wait until uh, everyone is here. Uh, by the way, Lano. Yeah. Um, in this city or where, wherever the fuck we. Yeah. Is there a library or or something like? Uh, like yeah, uh, you're gonna start in Gladius, the capital of Gr uh, Grim Dawn. So there is there is a few libraries there. Let us say that Grim Dawn is not famous for being book smart people. Okay, <laughs> but I, there I is library. An, I just had an idea for for later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you're not gonna t burn it down. That would be no, awful. No, 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 <laughs> not. Because uh, there's a thing uh, alchemists can do. It's like sort of like um, yeah, they can learn this, uh, new uh, uh, recipes and stuff like that. Yeah, there's uh, a certain thing you create like um, not a clay exactly, but um, it, it's like a foam or something, and then you can use it to print stuff from like scrolls and stuff oh, like that. That's pretty so neat. I, I was thinking about stealing some um, recipes and magic. Well, I mean, can't you, I just throwing this up, but can't you just use that to print money? Yeah, that yeah, I could probably do that. But <laughs> then that, again, does this place have uh, paper money? Yeah, I don't think they have. No, it's uh, mainly, but you can do forgery and stuff like that with that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, uh, let's see if Nana is here as well. We're missing Nana. Otherwise, I think and Crimson. Uh, Nana. Crimson. Ah, he's not part of this. I'm gonna do like this. Ah, you already wrote there. You're so fast. Uh, I'm gonna do like this a little bit, and I'm gonna hide the uh, Where do I see? Where do I see what I get as a starting equipment? Uh, you can see it on um, On your class you have under ah, Okay, Nana can't jump to okay, okay Class kit right, yeah and uh, I'd said Nana can't join for today, but uh, that's the stuff that happens sometimes. So hopefully can join next time instead. Yeah, we're missing our frogling. That's a little bit sad, but he, he joined next time instead. Oh god, I can't move shit. Oh, wait. Uh, uno momenta. I'm gonna send an invite to... Um... 
I send an invite and they should be joining um, Monty to join now. Yeah, it's Monty. Can uh, you give him uh, and uh, what the, what do you call it? Yeah, it's Monty. Is his name? And we have otherwise we have everyone here that's gonna join. Yay! We have a uh, pretty stacked party here, I will say. Yeah, don't, don't worry, Kuroki. Uh, take take your time. We we're gonna still starting things up. It, it's always a little bit uh, shaky in the beginning, you know, before we all <laughs> just indulge us in madness. I know that will happen. Yeah. Bless stats everywhere, indeed. And I mean, mine is pretty average. Except in like Dex and Intelligence. Yeah, they are they are the best stats for your uh, class after all. So where's the equipment? Uh, didn't uh, wait. I'm gonna see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Barbarian kits. You can uh, have find it there. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, did Monty get in here? Did he join? I think so. Monty G three seven. Yeah, that's him. Um, see if he gets in here. Ah, oh, there he is. Monty have joined the chat. Perfect. Hello. Hey, man. I'm gonna wait. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Now we are all here. And we have an absolute slaughter fest going on here. Okay. Uh, we have Jabnat, Haku, Monty, Potato, Vodka, and Kuroki here. That's gonna play with me. That sounds wrong when it's I say it like that. But <laughs> please bear with me. <laughs> uh, and... In this campaign, is playing Pathfinder 2, sec well, second edition, and it's a little bit different than first edition, obviously, and a little bit different than uh, Pathfinder, well, Dra Dungeons and Dragons 5th uh, edition, which I haven't played, so I can't say much, but... And it's also taking place in a setting I have created completely, so there is a lot of things... To fill out, you know, it's it's not a complete world yet. There is a, yeah, that is why you guys come in. You're gonna probably fill in the holes either with rich history or corpses. <laughs> Knowing this group, it's most likely corpses, but uh, we're gonna see about that. And there we go. <laughs> Ooh, straw hat, nice. And kind of fishing rod. And we, this is gonna start in Grim Dawn, which is a country in Grandor. Grandor is called, is what the entire world is called. Uh, well, at least the known world. And Grim Dawn is, that was not the right button. Uh, Grim Dawn is a very, very, very large, uh, I don't know, well, not a very large, but a large country separated in eight different regions. Nine with Iron Spike, which is the, the center, which is the capital um, located. And each of these regions have one lord and one mercenary group that uh, rule the region. This is literally a state of mercenaries. Mercenary rule these lands. Um, you find mercenaries everywhere. It's the most common job. And many travel here simply to find... Well, if I can, if you can punch a person, you're you're fit for the job, pretty much. You don't need much people skill to join um, a mercenary group here, pretty much. And you're all part of the Dark Vale um, mercenary group called Dark Spawns, where you are, well. More or less um, working for, for a while, 
Um, I will say like this. You guys decide how long you've been working with this. Because I know this is not like your peak career. For many of you, it's just a landing for taking, using your skills, earning some extra money uh, by being a mercenary and stuff like that. And you guys have gathered and met each other. Maybe a few times. Some of you maybe met each other for the first time. Um, uh, so you guys are a little bit like gathering into this. You're, you are a big mixture of people that works for this mercenary group. Uh, you are now all in Gladius, the large capital of Grimdawn, which is an arena uh, kind of like city it's full of arenas it's full of like colosseums it's like where all gladiators are like sportsmen they are sports stars you know uh, many of you maybe even tried chance because you know you, you can become a big name you can earn lots of money uh, as well joining the different mercs and all of that and you've been hired by just uh, dark spawn uh, which is considered to be one of the more like darker mercs, not because they're doing anything particularly evil, it's more because they are located in Dark Vale, which is a very corrupted dark land, and many don't want to work there. Hence, you guys have been recruited because you guys are a bit of a misfits as you are, and it's easy for you to get a job there. And you're all gathered because you've been hired for a certain mission. Hence, this rather large group because you guys have been hired by a merchant um, your group because you have an um, sergeant above you a man called John Alderman let us say John Alderman is your sergeant and he is an uh, um, let us say a little bit of a spoiled noble son uh, that is quite a big coward. Uh, his father had sent this sh uh, only son to become a real man by becoming a mercenary. And hopefully that this will toughen up. Um, here you have an image about this guy. As you can see, uh, an, uh, an obvious top tier alpha male. Big coward. Uh, quite nervous. And you guys kind of like can push him whatever you want, actually. However, he's not the only one. Only one. He, he's there to be a, like coaching, well, telling you guys what to do. But the one that with true power is uh, Captain Silvervale. That is Captain of Division 3, which you guys are part of. You're part of this Division 3, which is one of the smaller divisions. And... Um, Captain Silvervale, she is an, uh, unlike John Alderman, is a very um, strict and serious warrior. And uh, she looks like this. Uh, let's see where we had her. And here we have her. And from, from what you know, she's actually an uh, Kitsune. And yes, Potato, we are streaming actually. Yes, Cheerios! <laughs> and you're mocking me! God damn it! Yeah. That is the crew, so to speak. You have your captain, you have the sergeant, and you guys are below them in rank. Some of you are there for... You've been recently hired, maybe. Some of you maybe worked before, because generally... Um, you they hire in these mercenaries at random. Uh, well, you get a contract, they hire you, and uh, you get a job. And depending on how well you do, you get more or not. Yeah, you you. Yeah, it's not like you will um, stop mocking. No, I know, I know that potato. I know that. So don't don't worry, don't worry. I will not change your personality. <laughs> and. Uh, you guys have gathered on a large open field where you see lots of wagons. 
lots of uh, taverns, lots of shops, uh, lots of people, many blacksmiths, and you see lots of soldiers of all sorts and uh, races walking by. You see orcs, you see dwarfs, you see humans, uh, you see elves, and most of them are warriors of some sort, but you do see sometimes what look like a wizard and um, stuff like that. And you see all of this, and among these are a bunch of wagons with a red box kind of symbol on the side, which belongs to the uh, the one that have been hiring you guys for this mission, Red Cargo. And I want you guys, you guys are there, hopefully not too drunk. I don't know what your characters have been doing to, yeah, to Oregon Trial, pretty much. Uh, no, uh, you're the only one, only ranger, Kuroki. Uh, and I want you guys to explain a little bit about your characters, how they look like, and pers you, you don't need to go in like super much right now if you don't have an um, real concept yet. But uh, you can explain about you a little bit about your character and all that. And yeah, Potato, you can start. Um, because you all have gathered there on um, this... On this ground, so to speak. I am potato. I'm made of roots. Well, that you are. That you are. Yeah, that's pretty much potato. He is an. Um... <laughs> potato. Yeah, he is a. He is a literally a, a leshy potato. So, yeah. It's amazing. I do say it's it's amazing. It's really amazing, and um, that's it, indeed. This is something that is very odd because many of you maybe not even seen a leshy before. Leshies are. Uh, literally plant creatures. Creatures created from plants. And potato is literally a potato leshy that is a barbarian. So for mo most, he looks like a cute potato in hide armor and a big axe. And a tiny flower on top of his head. Aww, that is adorable. And, well, that is potato. Who want to go next and describe their character a bit? <laughs> oh, so many people writing. And Shakuroki. Don't worry, it's no stress. Several people, yes, there are lots of people here suddenly. Lots of characters. But I'm happy there is a lot of many joining. Because we have... Quite a few here, actually. I'm just gonna and see what the chat right. Uh, can you? Uh, right now, uh, we have a pretty full group, but I will try to do more sessions with more uh, groups. So maybe you can join them. I'm trying to keep up so we can have more D and D sessions. Uh, gonna lose in Steam before I lost some inter. Ah. Yeah, uh, you can go nut. Where's my boys? <laughs> and I love that swag swag. That is a glorious name, I will say. And uh, which forest do you mean, Kuroki? Do you mean the forest um, outside of Iron Spike? There's a forest there. Not a big one. I'm playing Buddy, a shuni barbarian wearing a big straw hat, some overalls, and have over some backpack and a fishing rod. He's a pug walking on. <laughs> oh god. That's amazing. A shuni barbarian. Small boy. That's a cutie. 
Ah, you had a... Okay, yeah. Uh, what kind of instinct did you pick for your... Uh, barbarian nut? Animal instinct. Okay, yeah, that, that actually makes sense. That do fit, that do fit. Hopefully next year. Ah, uh, well... You know, a house with marketplace come this. Ooh, I didn't know that. I can't wait to see that. Oh my god, that's gonna be amazing. Mm. Go for it, vodka. And if I'm slow to reply the chat in Twitch, it's because I'm focusing on the adventure and the players right now. So don't think it's because I want to ignore you guys. It's just that I'm trying to focus on uh, uh, what I'm doing right now, which is. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> My character is Vladimir, a damper fighter with a blood curse that sometimes provokes frenzy. About 250. Yeah, you know, uh, he comp comp he like super big compared to everyone else instead. You know, that have been uh, small. And already we have a very, very mixed group. We have a Leshy, a Shuni, Dampir. It's a pretty big mixture. And Haku, uh, my niece is a small silver scale kobold, a small lisa man with brilliant shiny red eyes with a hint of orange teeth. Ooh, pretty. He has simply robe and small horns. His uh, eyes dart back and forth looking for cures of all different races. Also has a pair of very round Harry Potter-like glasses. Not because he need them, but he found them think they are neat. I mean, that is... You know, that is something what you need. You look smarter with them. And yes, that is true, Saba. Everyone is small creatures, and it's pretty funny because they're playing your favorite race, Shuni. I know you love Shunis. <laughs> uh, so we have a cobalt. Oh god, everyone is so small. Uh, Monty, what is? You can describe your character a little bit. Oh, oh, I forgot. Monty said the goblin. Oh no, everyone is small. <laughs> Just a gaggle of small. Tiny, tiny, tiny. tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just, everybody just stacks on fucking yeah. Here. Uh, Riz is a small green-skinned goblin. He has beady red eyes and sharp teeth. He's race known for. Started led on a strapping of alchemists. Riz also a bit green, uh, covered in soot. In fact, some other soot seem to never fully wash away. <laughs> Uh, got into an accident tussle with a cat. Oh god, yeah, fear the cat. Uh, cats are terif terifi terrifying creatures, indeed. He's had a pinky thing on his left hand from that, too. Ooh. And that's Riss, a small greenish alchemy goblin. It's pretty fun we have two gob let's say goblin, two alchemists here. It's gonna be interesting how they're gonna go. Alchemy. Alchemy. <laughs> and last but not least is Kuroki. Uh, you hadn't really decided anything yet. Uh, you're a myste mysterious android. Uh, that that I do know. Kuroki is a very mysterious person. And Eric, uh, not I got a comment here from a Twitch chat that says eradicate all Shuni. I might know that person. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will literally <laughs> haunt your dreams. Yeah, okay. There's, It's no worries about that. And we have a Shuni. Yes, Haku, you have a Shuni. Not just playing a Shuni. And I think that is all of you. You all are part of the Darkspawn mercenary group. You are a real misfit group. And... Yeah, seeing that um, this group uh, with John Alderman as your sergeant, he trying to be a bossy. Yeah, uh, when you all are there, like this really scattering group is like you see he like nervously stomping in place. Like, well, uh, uh, line up, please, line up, please. Oh, come on, I don't do that. Come, uh, come, come here, stand in line, please. Please come here. He... See, uh, John trying to gather everyone in a line. Because you're not the only guys in this group, so to speak. Um, with ev with except John Alderman, that is your sergeant. And Silvervale, that is your captain. 
company Gremlin spawn instead with all these tiny bitches. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that, that is true. That is true. Tiny and we are proud. <laughs> Tiny and proud, indeed. Um, there is two other people that joins in in this. That is part of the dark spawn. Um, one is Ivan, this guy, and Centaur, cleric Centaur. That is there to... He is literally there to heal your asses. Because you don't have an otherwise real healer. Except... He's pos bald. <laughs> he's bald indeed. Yeah, he's a big centaur, man. And... No, Potato. Don't kill him yet. Don't kill him yet. And you also have... An... Uh, uh, wizard. Known as Imeth. An elven wizard. Those are part of the, the crew. They are part of the team. Uh, even if um, uh, they are more or less... Imif is a very, like... You, you guys have seen her quite a bit. She's very, like, very smart. But she don't really, like, connect with normal people and normal feelings. So to speak. And um, Ivan, this big centaur, is very much like... Very chill. And all of that. And you see... Uh, he's a kind of worried as he walks. You see this big centaur walking towards the group. And he's like... Oh, I hope all the small little creatures are staying away. I don't want to step on you. Um, yeah. <laughs> this big centaur standing in line. You guys are now gathered, I hope. You just growl at him. Okay. The potato growling. And <laughs> Sean got root here. Oh, I don't know how a potato growls, but I it probably makes sense. Even takes a move action. All spell character take 10 D D4 damage. Indeed, that would happen. And if he if he steps on potato, he turned to mash potato, and we don't want that accident again. Um but you see John once again. Okay, everyone, please stay in line. Get in line. Act like professionals, please. And okay, yeah, risk gathering and <laughs> looking at the horseman. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see people want, starting to slowly get into like uh, in a, some sort of line. And you see a woman appearing. Uh, long pink hair, extravagantly clad in uh, very uh, rich, fabulous clothing that is obviously high fashion. But since most of you are uh, troglodytes without any kind of fashion sense, uh, it probably doesn't appear for you. But you do know this one thing, obviously, which is Booba. Because I know most of... Most of the characters here are probably like horny uh, dumbasses. So, yeah. Uh, this is your contractor. The one that hired uh, your uh, service. She is Namora... Well, Sherry Red Cargo. She, she has a very like... A noble stepping, like, you know, she's uh, very, let's say this, she's very wealthy, she has quite a lot of power, and she looks a little bit suspicious at you guys. Like, well, I guess I can't get better for a sudden job like this. Mm -hmm. she, yeah, she, she looks at you, then go on to her wagon. Climbing up uh, to set inside of it. Uh, meanwhile, the captain, Silvervale, vale, appears. Okay, you small trolls. She has a very cold, kind of distant voice. It's time to... For a job. We are hired to protect three wagons to the shade, uh, Shaden Hall. Our first stop is at... Let's see, what the fuck did I name that place? Uh, Fieldmore. 
that is the first stop before we continue towards Dark and Vale. Well, Dark Vale. Along the way, there will be most likely bandits and similar. You guys have seen that before. You know how to deal with those. The payment is as usual. Boom. Yes, if there are bandits attacking, they can go ba kaboom. Nice. The main. Nice. You do as you need to, Riz. If they, if you find that that you want want or need to kill, you do it. As long as they are a threat to our contractor, which is uh, Sherry Red Cargo here. Understand? Our goal is to protect the wagons and the treasuries within them that are transported to towards Dark Vale. Understood? Any other questions before we leave? I hope you all have prepared yourself for this mission. Good. Good. We will start in 10 minutes. So if you have any final preparations you want to do in Gladius, let's move out after 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, killing people, well, that's part of the mercenary job after all. And as said, you see, it's quite a lot of people walking around. And um, you see, they're preparing. You see, the, the, the work, some, some simple workers loading the wagons like the last... Wagons and all of that, and uh, basically, don't kill anyone. You don't need, yeah, pretty much. You don't need to kill everyone. You can, probably not. Am I able to carry on body and chonker? Um, you can, but you will be uh, hindered because they are still small creatures, and they do weigh a little bit. But yeah, you can bear carry them. I don't, no problems. Uh, so you can't really carry them if you're gonna fight, but otherwise they can literally ride on you. So, uh, and you should already you can count it as done for today, Monty. Your preparations have been already set for today, so you can already uh, what you have already planned because you it's quite early the day, but you still have. You know, gotten up and up and running. And that you can do vodka. You can help to put on your armor and and others' armors as well. You see, Ivan the Centaur is walking there with um, um, uh, blood. Can can you help me a little bit? My um, I have a little problem with the the chain armor. You know, it's not easy when you're a part man and part horse. You you know, <laughs> uh, I don't have that long arms. See, he's st stomping with his big hoof. Uh, thank you, my good friend. Vlad is caring for his nursery. Indeed, Vlad is literally like a uh, uh, mother hen in this case. And I'll be a purse dog. Oh, God. This gotta be chaotic. I know that. Oh, no. Uh, Sam walks up to his question about curiosity. Yeah. Um, uh, Riz noticed that this kobold. You, you, you two can almost smell like the alchemy uh, ingredients on each other. Like you feel like, ah, yeah, I can smell the alchemy on you. <laughs> Shall be just by the making dog noises. Okay. Um, naive nature spirit. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> It's just funny Vlad is like surrounded by this. Like he's like, yeah, indeed, mother hen. Horseman sucks at horsemaning. I mean, uh, to be fair, uh, uh, Yuki. I mean, Mir, considering you know, he has a very large, large ass, so to speak, H horse ass. You know, uh, smell sulfur, chemicals, and gunpowder. Yeah, pretty much the normal alchemy stuff. You know, and. You guys are about to set off when 
With infuse, I got Dale Prep. I want to make two things of Alchemy Fire Luster. One thing. Yeah, that's okay, Monty. Um, while you guys are working, you're seeing that um, one man is a, a pretty large man is walking towards Riz. Uh, uh, he's very big, he, uh, well, a human, but uh, more like, uh, pretty fat. He looks like the, uh, someone that works at an inn, like, you know, a uh, bouncer. Uh, big, uh, balding head, big nose, scar over his uh, forehead. Uh, walking towards Riz with very aggressive, you have a very, a very aggressive stance. Okay, I saw you, little goblin. You see, walking towards um, Riz. I, I saw you. Uh, you stole from uh, my boss. Um, Riz, you have no idea what he's talking about, but uh, he seemed to be uh, about to want to, like, really grab you. But he's still not doing that. You other one, you other see how this man suddenly steps towards Riz and accuse him for being a thief, pretty much. And uh, the limit on how much stuff you can do per day is, um, Monty, you have that in uh, you have that in your head, right now. Uh, I don't have it in right in my, on my head right now. Me no fee, me entertainer. Watch. You see the man looking suspicious, squinting his eyes at Riz. Entertainer. Ha. <laughs> entertainer. Entertain my ass. Goblins are not fun. How can you entertain then? Huh? Ever for uh, goblins are just f f f quick thieves. Is it very like uh, hell bent on set setting uh, you straight, Riz? For some reason. And yeah, I think that is right, Haku. So one uh, plus. Your int modifier is the amount you can make. Goblin raid. Yep. Um, can I try intim... Yes, Vodka. You can absolutely do that. Do You can roll for intimidation. Because if not... Well, Kuroki, um, you can be like... Uh, Kuroki, your character, Black Zero, is standing in the, in the corner of the... Like, everything. Keep an eye like... Uh. If that fails, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, Monty, you can roll first. Uh, your fascinating performance. If you can fascinate him. <clears throat> oh, God. And hello, Tex. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, you. that sounds good, Vodka. Um, oh, yeah. We, for To be fair, we're using um, a dice roller in the chat. How did you do that, um Vodka, uh, potato. How did you ro use the D20 roller? Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a nice roll. <laughs> um, so, if possible, Monty, you can use this. Uh, we all players use it to uh, be fair, so everyone have open rolls on uh, the table and all of that. <laughs> so, hopefully it won't be an... Um, a nice user free. I should make uh, two Dwarven Daisy firecrackers, Elixir of Life, and Bestial Mut. Oh my god, that sounds savage. And that you need, Tex. You need to join us one day. Now we're gonna see if our goblin can perform and woo our very obviously goblin racist uh, friend. Because it's, um, yeah. See if we get this. This will be. Uh, you will observe, succeed if target is fastened by your. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I'm. I understand the Monty. So go for the roll. 
16 plus what do you have what do you have in uh, your uh, um Plus your performance. Plus five. So 21. Oh, That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you actually see this large man uh, standing there like being enthralled by your... What? Do, you can, can you describe a little bit what you do? Do you like juggle or uh, doing some funny acrobatics or... Yeah. If you have, if you have something your character do. Because you see this man... Really do get like, oh, look at this guy. He is funny. I never thought goblins could be funny. No, no, a bit behind. What? What did I miss? Did I miss something? Some micro sky booms, basic small share bound that pop out. Ah, okay, that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna try to remember that text. But uh, you see the man like, oh, dude, that, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. I like that. Okay. Uh, I guess. I mean, uh, that was cool. That was that that was that was really cool. I I I mean, a problem. Uh, my boss being misunderstanding. My boss is a little bit uh, of a whiny baby, you know. I was so sorry to disturb. It was fun. I hope you will show more, because that was cool. I know my kids will love that. Oh, you see, he's just going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was super fun. Uh, yeah, your eyes are full of coral to see the kaboosh. Uh, yes, you see the large man, actually, by risk, smart thinking, and performance. <laughs> Uh, actually diffuse the situation and the large man go away uh, you see further away this large man go talking to a man that uh, a large fat man sitting on a chair looking over and his small beady fat eyes is glaring at you you can almost feel like yeah it doesn't matter what you guys do he don't like you guys at all pretty much and you see, as, as all these things happening, you see a man walking uh, towards you. Uh, you see, he's a tall, lanky man. Uh, pretty thin, obviously not as tall as uh, Vlad. Vlad is an exceptionally tall man. Uh, but he is pretty tall and slender figure. And uh, uh, he has a head that is crystal. You see, he's like... Well... I will be the first wagon man. I am Crystal. Well, Chris, you can call me Chris. Crystal Claire for you here at service today. I hope you all are ready for some wagon action because I am your guy. Jump on. Let's go, guys. I hope you guys protect me because I am a sensitive man. Um, yeah. I don't know what you're trying. Are you trying to actually attack? Well, at least this time you don't attack the pilot flying the ship. <laughs> Never. Yeah, I'm probably better not with that roll, man. A D2, man. Ah, oh, oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. Uh, that's 10. Okay, okay, okay. You see that? You see the the man called Chris is like, yeah. Okay, guys, uh, we have loaded everything. I hope you guys are ready to protect us, because, you know, I don't want to be like that, but, you know, I'm a sensitive man. I can't take pain. That was how I lost my head. Hey! Man, easily. Uh, you see, he hop up on the first wagon uh, that is dragged by uh, some really, really large rams. You know, those are like Grim Dawn rams. Grim Dawn rams are known for being like very big, very strong, and very hard headed animals. And you guys get to jump up onto the roofs of the wagons to keep an eye. Um, and for those that have a little bit hard time climbing, can get help up by probably Vlad that can like throw up people. Like, <laughs> Like, hey! 
That is very helpful indeed. Actually, surprisingly, like this group haven't killed. I mean, we have been playing for about 40 minutes and, and you haven't killed one yet. That's amazing. And Vlad picking us up. It pretty much is. Yes. Whoop, whoop. Um, yes, you can. Sam can do that. Sam can ride on the horseman's back. You see, Ivan is like, Oh, well, hold. Uh, I hope you're holding on tight, my little friend. Hold on to the, my cape so you don't fall off when I start to move. <laughs> you see, Ivan doesn't seem to have a problem with that. Yeah, well, obviously, Ivan is not on the wagon. He's riding beside, like. Yes, well, Kuroki, uh, your character Black Zero can climb up on the wagon as well, so you all are on the wagons. Because uh, imagine they are three wagons, all of them are like uh, pretty big with like walls and roofs of wood. So you guys can sit on top of them because they are pretty stacked. Like you, you notice that it's full of loot inside. There are lots of boxes and uh, sacks on top. So you guys are like finding a little bit place. Luckily, many of you are small. Quick, buddy, get the elf to carry. <laughs> Gil, just need glasses. Did not fall. I hold on to horse. Escape. Yeah, that's good. And well, you can do that, Kuroki. If you want to, want to, it's. I mean, it's it's nothing that prevents you from doing that. Uh, you all see, like Imif, the elf wizard. She's climbing up. Uh, struggling a little bit because even if she's a graceful elf, climbing doesn't seem to be her strength and kind of struggles a bit. But she finally gets up and, uh, yeah, ju jumps on as well. Like, oh, I hate climbing. Uh, um, while you're on the wagon, you, uh, Nut or Buddy, you notice that you have eyes on you. Someone is watching you. Somebody's watching you. Uh, obviously, very nearby. You're feeling Kuroki's eyes staring at you. Obviously having a sudden um, job is spooked. <laughs> Could be. And with that, the small caravan of free wagons slowly start to move. Um, with heavy sounds. By Chris, that is... Starting the first wagon and the other two following after, like. And Gladius, you're slowly leaving uh, through one of the many big gates that surround Gladius. Uh, Gladius is a big, uh, very rowdy city, you know. It's lots of people, lots of smiths, lots of hammering, and lots of, like, sm uh, smell of smoke and... Um, charcoal and stuff like that so coming out of it feels kind of refreshing because now you feel like oh there is more in the air than just soft and uh, charcoal maybe wrist don't really mind it because you wrist seem is kind of like the fire thing going on <laughs> smell like wood yes because uh, you're not soon entering Go, riding slowly downhills because it's a long windy road like along the mountainside and you down as you go down you enter soon a dark iron woods the dark iron woods is not a very big forest but it is notorious because it's one of small woods near gladius where many often angry and uh, often uh, thrown out Bandits and stuff like that gathers. And that is why it's important for... Uh, I'll be in a somewhat dormant state. Okay, yeah. Uh, you see potato do potato things. Dormant. And... All of these wagons... You know, creaking a lot. And... Um, as you enter the forest. It's... It's a very big change, because from all the low, loud noises you have heard, from smiths, from fights, from people shouting, to nothing. You hear just uh, vaguely some animals at distance. You hear some gr um, branches cracking. 
leaves rustle in the wind. And yeah, you guys slowly watching out. Uh, if there is anything you guys want to do, don't be afraid to write in the chat uh, what you guys. If you have, if there is anything you guys plan to do, um, because as it, as it is right now, you're in. Just enter the forest known as the Dark Iron Forest. It's pretty famous for being quite packed with bands. Hence, the heavy, heavily guarded uh, group of people. That you can do, vodka. Uh, you can roll a perception roll. Kobo, what's about Skaboo? Hmm? A friend, a friendly alchemist to another friendly alchemist. Uh, yes, potato. You can roll. Uh, perception as well. And meanwhile, Riz and uh, uh, Sam seemingly hitting off pretty well, actually. That's pretty... F perception. It is under your... Um, what do you call it? Your saves. Oh, no, that was not right. That was... <laughs> my YouTube. Under your saves. Let's see if I can... 15, okay. It's free wagons, yes. Uh, no, I, you're, I assume you all are spread out on the free wagons. And, um, okay, so. Actually, uh, it's, it's still. Okay, wolf. Yes, uh, your wolf is with your at your side, uh, though the wolf is probably most likely running or uh, walking beside the wagon. Uh, you're and Vlad are on the first wagon. We can say you guys are on the first wagon. And Vanguard, indeed. Yes, you see here, Miss. Yes, yes. And. Vodka, as you are keeping eyes out, you f you do notice uh, vaguely something that is off with the road in front of the first wagon, and that's br that is good, Kuroki. And I see that potato. Uh, just keeping an eye out, but you don't notice anything yet. And that's good. Uh, the alchemist can be in the middle. Um, but yes, vodka, you notice there is something off with the road. It's yes, you can do that. Uh, but you guys see how vodka suddenly disengaged from the group, from the wagon, and uh, walking towards, and you see a Chris on the wagon is like. Stops the wagon. Oh, well, do you see something there? Um, Vlad, you notice that it's an hole in the ground covered by thin branches and dirt. Okay, a classic trap, you know, fall trap that they pr someone probably built to make uh, and um, trap a wagon. That would you notice? Uh, Pitfall. Oh, not again! Oh man, they're really trying to get us down with that, eh? You know something too about this? Yes, trap, trap, trap. Um, ha uh, Zim Zem knows for sure that that's a big, like, typical pitfall trap. Get the booms quick. Yes. Um, it is then, potato. Uh, as you've been keeping eyes out, you notice from your left side a vague movement. And you can see something glimmering. And then you see someone standing up and 
long in between the trees with a bow. You can see the arrow as they aim the shot. Right. I'll give you a chance to... You will stand up! Okay, Kuroki jumps up to the trees. Uh, you can roll an acrobatic uh, Kuroki. To jump to into the trees. Oh, athletics, I mean. This is a sling. Mm. Slingy. Hey, hey. Character boom. Yeah, um, you all heard suddenly how. Um, Shonker screeching like <coughs> it's a very high pitched little war scream, and uh, you all realize there is something going on when an arrow suddenly launched. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's you know, it's launched at let's see who it gonna be aimed at. Uh, it's aimed at, uh, well, actually, a potato. Enemy spotted! Uh, does a 19 hit potato? Is you, uh, your AC higher uh, or lower than 19? It's 18. Oh, uh, you get hit by an arrow. Twank, and you get hit by... Seven damage. You all see how the mighty potato stands up, screeching, as an arrow suddenly struck him in the shoulder. A smack! Sorry. Potato screams indeed. <laughs> and with a pain, you feel the pain, but you're obviously not down. Far from down. You're not a down potato yet. But you do feel pain. Uh, and you all... All can roll initiative. Or in this case, uh, roll perception. Uh, you use perception as your initiative roll here. I'm a mighty warrior. Come and fight me. Truly terrifying words i ever seen. Uh, okay, Vatka got 16. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty good. Ooh, 20 on potato. Damn, that's a chunky monger, man. Not down, just mad. Yeah, and you know what? They even made the, the barbarian potato even angrier. I don't think that's a good thing to do, actually, when I think about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about we piss off the barbarian even more? Um, 16, okay. Can I say, yes, Croak, but you need to roll a perception roll uh, to decide your, uh, in which order you get to act. Ears flat, uh, yes. Uh, Rizzi ears falls also back. Uh, 13, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna... Kuroki, black zero. 13. Uh, nine on Riz. Uh, yeah, what happened with Nut? Our uh, Shuni kind of vanished. I think Yabba's FK. Okay. Um, he got invaded by the Danes, probably. That's That sounds about the, about right. Uh, meanwhile, let's see what the bandits roll. Okay, they are. Bandits are pretty slow. Uh, yes, the perception roll is to determine turn order. Uh, so the first to act is Potato. Potato, what are you doing? Now I'm going to explain. This is a little bit of an explanation for you guys that are new to the second edition system. You get three actions. It's very simple. You have three actions you can do on your round. You can attack three times. 
Uh, you can move three times, you can move two times and attack once. Uh, stuff like this. You have three actions you can do. Um, in this case, so to speak. It's pretty simple, actually. And, of course, the more you attack... If you attack, first you get normal attack. Second attack, you get minus 5. And the third, you get minus 10. If you don't have any bonuses or different style, uh, like uh, Agile Weapon or Finesse. Uh, you won't be able to reach uh, him in this round. But you can jump down and move to st uh, and use to... Uh, actions to move, and the guy is still there, yeah. So you you will be able to reach him next round. Move stride, indeed. In his yes, uh, also potato. You can rage. You need to declare that you rage, so you we know that you're going bonkers, you know. So you get. I won't. Okay, you won't. Okay, you're holding it back. You hold him back, you rage. Oh. Um, that's what you guys see. You see Potato jumps down from the wagon and rush in towards the forest. And he kind of quickly vanishes in all the brushes and among the trees. And then it is... Um, let's see. Ha uh, Volka and Haku. Who has highest dex modifier of, a, of you two? Plus four. What does uh, vodka have? Okay, then, yeah, and then, then we do the Haku uh, go for before vodka. So Haku, what do, what does Sam do? It's that. Uh, Sam got that little inch like cobalt speed. Wah! Cobalt ninja style. Dex tiebreaker, <laughs> indeed. Uh, put one in the sling, twirl it, and chuck at the bandit. Okay, um, it take an action to load your sling, and then you throw. So roll an attack. Five. My stealth was seven plus... Uh, how do you account for that, Kuroki? Uh, you roll a d20 plus your stealth modifier, but it's still not its not your turn yet, so you need to wait a little bit before uh, you, we, we decide what you do. And you all see how the little kobold... Uh, d20. D20 plus your attack, that what you have is strike. Uh, you see how the little kobold loading in something in a sling, and then like whoo, 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 shuck, Whee! Uh, you do get something because you are trained, uh, Haku. Shouldn't get scared from risk warfire. Uh, unfortunately, well, that sounds like a dog thing, you know. You know, dogs are scared of firecracker, and people. I'm scared of firecrackers. Goddamn. I heard T20, uh, but you were saying D20. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Tex. Um, for me, you're Tex. <laughs> uh, what bonus? Um, what do you have? Because you're trained in uh, simple weapons, and slaying is simple. And you get from your strength... I think it's Dex modifier for your strike to hit with the sling, I think. So plus four... Uh, if it's X, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, no. What are you doing there? A little shit. Uh, let's see here. Um, you should have like plus four, uh, plus, uh, Free, so plus seven you should have. Damn. Yeah, so plus seven on your attack. So d20 plus seven, yes. 22, <laughs> not bad. Uh, rolled damage, because you do actually hit. You see how uh, the kobold swinging his sling and sh shooting something right in between the trees above 
potato's head uh, into the bandit with a bow. Like that a spin bow. Oh, that have hit your spud. Um, a string of firecrackers. Yeah, uh, what is the damage? So you roll a d6 plus... Um, uh, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So you roll your damage. I'm gonna have a javelin. Could you just chuck the... <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, you, you act like your character do. Like So let's say that maybe you're... Um, Shonker is not the first one to use an uh, uh, javelin. He's more like bomb. Well, rush in and hit things. And uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. And there is an. Uh, you need to make an fortitude to not be dazed. So roll one d six plus one damage, and um, Haku, for damage. Four damage, and you see, yeah, uh, you see, you see the bandit <laughs> oh, 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 dropping his bow as he gets uh, confused, uh, burned a little bit in his uh, dirty face, and dropping his bow in the, as he gets uh, dazzled. So he's not dead. But it actually did bamboozled. Uh, you still have one action left, Haku. You can't uh, load and sh uh, throw again, but you can load another bomb in your sling and have it ready for next round, though. If you want to do that, or if there is anything else you want to do. And Chunky going potata, indeed. <laughs> He's a way to string a fire like, like sky booms. A normal sling ammo. Okay, so you load in there. And that's Haku's turn. Um, ah, you forgot your bow. Yeah, you need to. Bows can do quite a lot of damage. And then it's Vodka's turn. Vlad, as you discover this trap, uh, I don't need to roll save against at least. A, a, yeah, you, you need still need to see quite a bit of blood before you need to roll for it. Um, as you were discovering and researching this trap, uh, you hear Potato while Shankar screaming as an arrow struck into him. And you see how Shankar jumps down from the wagon and rush into the forest. And above the middle wagon, you see Sem. Uh, well, he sits on uh, Ivan's back, loading and throwing in a bomb into the forest, exploding, making lots of noises. And you hear someone like... <laughs> Very dramatically dying now. <laughs> so what does vodka? Well, Vlad do. And you do all now notice there is... Alright, how many actually... Um, uh, as it is right now, you see... Uh, some other figures a little bit at the side. So you can move... Two actions and then get one attack. Vlodka, indeed, Vlodka. You're now under attack. Bye. Bandits! Do I know how many? No, you don't know. You see uh, about two, and you see also a third one that been. Uh, Got blown a little bit in the face. That's not wrong when I say it like that. Don't take that out of context. Please. <laughs> but you see those two that are somewhat hiding and are showing themselves because they're ready to strike. But you assume there are a bit more of them. And use my turn to walk towards the and use a two-hand attack with Bass's sword. Okay, roll attack, vodka. Uh, you all see how the big, uh, well, rather tall, almost scrawny, like a slender man with a sword suddenly uh, quickly moves. And oh my god, he rolls a nat 20. 
Oh my <laughs> fucking god. Here it is. Holy. Oh boy, that's a net 20. Uh, that means that you guarantee hit and you do double damage. So you roll your damage and times it to... Oh my god! <laughs> Compensate it with uh, low roll on damage. <laughs> still, still, 10 damage. From hero to zero. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but yeah, you see... You, you slice in onto this man... And uh, big gaping wound over his chest as he like back, uh, bleeding very heavily. Like, ah! oh my, ah! he got me. Corey, take him. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. Bleeding can be good. Yeah, if it was 32 damage, you would have obliterated them. I can say that right away. You would have turned him to dust. And, uh, yes, that's your turn, Vodka. And with that, it is next person in line, who is Kuroki. It's your turn. You have three actions. What do you want to do? Well, Ambulance, but not for me! <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful to see a nat 20 so early in the game. Uh, the situation is like this, Kuroki. You um, and everyone are on the wagons. Well, Potato have jumped off the wagon, rushed in to get to the Archer. Sam, the Cobalt Alchemist, shot in a bomb at Archer, while Vlad the Dampir have been going uh, somewhat a uh, little bit forward to fight two bandits, where he slides down pretty much one in one go. He's still alive, but very badly hurt. And um, yeah, there's still one there. But there is, you notice uh, the smell of more. You can get it's about four or five more people or bandits. So you know there are a bunch of bandits popping up in the forest right now. You can do that, Kuroki. Definitely. You can uh, back up and... Uh, um, you can use an action to stay behind the... Wa uh, hide behind the wagon and shoot with your bow, for example. So you're um, back with your character and then you get to draw... Uh, which take one action, just like the sling, it take one action to load and shoot. I think at least. Uh, yes, Yuki, that's how it works. You need to beat with the uh, 10. Which he did when he rolled that 20, so to say. And I also like to do that. Uh, nat 20, you do double damage though. So that's the other thing. I think at least. I And I allow that, because when you roll a 20, nat 20, it's supposed to be a good time, you know? Uh, yes, you can do the croaky. Uh, if, for example, if you want to, you can shoot some of the ba shoot at one of the bandits uh, that is fighting Vlad, for example, by using your bow. Um, I think you need a D... I forgot to add the D before 20, Kuroki. You need to add... Add a D. D. Tenacious D. Oh. Yeah, it happens. It, it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about, man. As, lo as long as we, 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 we're doing this, man. Now we can get and do we get another nat twenty? I am excited to see. Well, not too bad, not too bad. Nineteen. Uh, you actually do hit. So roll your damage, uh, Kuroki. Hmm. Hmm. 
So now you roll the damage for the bow, which is, um, I think it's a d8 plus uh, strength, I think. I think that's what it is. Oh, God. I want to scare the crap out of me. No plus. Oh, it's no plus on it. No plus. Oh, it's no plus on it. Oh, shit. No plus. Oh, it's no plus on it. Oh, shit. No plus. Oh, it's no plus on it. It's forever echo. Oh, God, I was horrible here. <laughs> it's a sad day when you're missing the D. Well, that's true. It's a sad day. Uh, but yeah, I think it's... Um, you ro but you can roll your damage, at least, uh, the D8. Because I, if I'm checking, you haven't... Uh, got it. Go for it. Do -do -do -do. What kind of bow is it? By the way? I think it's a short bow, right? Because you, ca you can't really buy any big bows in the beginning. Oh, long bow you can buy. Uh, I don't think you roll an... Um I don't think you do I don't think you roll with plus nine. Let's see here. Uh, 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 I think it's just a d8 you roll. So it's two damage um, plus your um, strength because you still aim and all of that. From my understanding. Let's see here. I'm gonna check. I, I haven't really used much bow. Uh, do, 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 do. Dead volley in place helm. A long bow, yeah? Um, might be adding the hit chance, yeah. Uh, you do have. Uh, what does he. A d8 plus his uh, damage, uh, like strength uh, modifier. Because you still use that for the damage, I think, on the bow. Uh, <laughs> uh, bonuses plus penalties. Um, okay, so it's only da uh, damage that. Okay, okay. I'm terrible, sorry, I am a little bit, uh, bit slow, but okay. So it's two damage uh, on, the, on the roll. And you see the arrow uh, grazing one of the men, slitting up a little wound on his shin as the arrow um, uh, passed by one of the bandits. Uh, so the arrow don't uh, do much damage, but it did hit. A little bit at least. And that's pretty much Kuroki's... Ba uh... Oh, reload don't do that maybe. Then you can shoot again, yes. Uh, if so, then go for it. Then you can attack another time, uh, one more time, um, Kuroki. Reload is zero. Yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. So you can shoot an, an extra time instead, Kuroki. Though it's minus five on the attack this time. Because uh, it's a second attack. Well... We're learning stuff, uh, thankfully. <laughs> I only, to my defense, I only played a rogue with daggers, pretty much, and uh, fighter. Well, but that's good, Mir. That's good. Uh, you can make another attack, uh, Kuroki, but you do get minus five on the attack. So instead of what did you roll? For your attack before you roll a d20 plus one yes vodka you got it right d20 plus one uh, on your attack roll this time so that's how it works with attacks for every attack you get minus five and um, makes it a little bit harder um no 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 that you, uh, it plus one so 19 uh croaky so that'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> you hit again. 
So roll damage, Kuroki. Again, uh, d one uh, d eight. So you actually do hit twice. Dang. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe not the most damage right now, but you know. Uh, and to be fair, you guys are level one, so you don't do any massive damage right now. That will come later on, though, when you get all the fancy loot and levels. The grace is just to get them out of the open for another shot. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know. Also, send me some more, like, yeah, dazzles and, like, mm. stuns and just... Level one, indeed. <laughs> I mean, we all started level one. In their and don't worry, Kuroki. Um, yeah, someone can roll a d8. Ooh, look at that. Um, you see the second arrow uh, vine through the air, uh, passing Vlad as it strikes the bandit that uh, Vl Vlad already cut in the head. The arrow's going deep. You hear the arrow, uh, arrow tip splitting skull and bone as it pierces right through the brain. And you see the bandit gurgle as he slowly falls back to the ground uh, in his own blood and arrow into his brain. And uh, that's one bandit down. With a nice headshot in the end there. That's, that's, that's what we like to see. Beautiful. That's beautiful, Kuroki. And with that, it's Kuroki's turn done. I'm still screeching. <laughs> Yes, uh, Kuroki, you kill. Uh, nope, it's not Bandit. It's um, Crimson's turn. Monty. It's uh, Riz Burntooth's turn. Actually, the Bandit's got Arrow Super Low on their initiative, so... <laughs> yes, you're a murderer. Well, to be fair, you're doing it in self-defense, so... <laughs> they are the ones attacking. And yes, Riz Burntooth, what do you do? Uh, how close are the bandits? Um, the bandits are about... Uh, the closest bandits are those that are w at Vlad. About 20 feet from you. Well, not 20, about more like f uh, 30 feet. And uh, as well, there is a few out, out in the forest, you notice. You notice a, quite a bit of rustling now as they're... Oop, uh, their trap kind of like, ah, shit, it didn't go as planned. Skulls for the skull throne, <laughs> indeed. That's what we want to see. Mm, yeah. It's not murder, it's active reorganization of a bandit's brain structure. <laughs> I mean, true, I guess. <laughs> uh, it, Yeah, that should be within bomb distance. I think you can throw it. That is why it's also good to have a sling, because you can load sling into the and throw. Or, later on getting an alchemist crossbow, so you can like do like a twitch thing from League of Legends, like... Poison bolt! Only style brain surgery, indeed. Like, this is, we call it open arrow surgery. We shoot an arrow and hopefully hit the right spot to lob lobotomize them. Alchemy crowbow? <laughs> well, you can do that, Kuroki. I mean, there is no. I mean, you can. I mean, I guess your wolf won't complaining if we get meat. <laughs> it's depending on if everyone else reacting like, oh, do we do that in this neighborhood, feeding the dead to the wolves? Maybe. You can also feed them to the goblin. I mean, I don't know if Riz eating uh, meat, but. Well, he probably do, but eating people. So since I have the quick bomb fit, I can take two turns using to use a bomb. Move on to range nor near vodka pool one that I can find made earlier and strike. It. Okay, go for it, Monty. Ooh, that was that was not good. I. Oh no. Um, you only limit the manage and part more. Well, true, true. Is that a crit miss? It's not a crit miss. Near, it's almost, but it's not a crit miss. It's just a miss. 
so you see, you're throwing the bomb, but it accidentally hit the tree branch, like explodes in fire. But you see, it makes people jump, and you see in the forest the bandits like, oh, they're bugs. Well, that combined with uh, Sam's uh, bomb before. Beware my skabooms! <laughs> um, but it is... Uh, yes, it's splat, but it doesn't hit them either, no. They are not close enough for the splash. Uh, on the bomb. Yeah, if, if it is, was it gonna hit vodka? But the, it wouldn't do much damage on him right now, but... Uh, so sadly, the bomb explodes in a... F putting the tree on fire. The tree is like... Ah! I'd use the bomber ability. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Crit fail would probably hit Vlad though. Yeah, that could happen. That could happen. Uh, with that, uh, Monty, do you have any more action? And doesn't the quick bomber do so you can pull and throw a bomb in one session instead of two? I thought that was what the quick bomber did. So wouldn't that mean that you still have a you can, another action? Yeah, because normally. You pick out the bomb and then throw it, which take two turns. But since you have quick bomber, you have like you can instantly like whoop, bah! so you still have one action left to do. Oh, you could have Haku. I did. I forgot that. Sorry, I'm terrible. Sorry. I. I did. All right, <laughs> one more batter up. <laughs> well, roll attack. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this is a crit miss, though. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dice. If it's... Okay, I'm gonna do like this. I'm gonna make an open roll. Um, T roll D20. If it's uh, 1 to 10, it hits Vlad. 11 to 20, it hits the bandit. Well, it doesn't hit the bandit, but it would hit, so... Okay, luckily, it doesn't hit Vlad. Instead, it go past the bandit and explodes behind him. Not hurting uh, uh, either Vlad or the bandit, though. So sadly... Uh, <laughs> uh, Monty haven't had the greatest start yet, but this is just the beginning. Maybe not... Well, he get like... Oh no! My beautiful hair is getting burned! It sizzles! You feel like... Well, mad bomber <laughs> indeed! Uh, Riz literally throwing bombs everywhere, not caring if he hit like... Ah! <laughs> yeah, it was a crit miss, uh, so it doesn't help. The only thing that was good, it wasn't that he hit uh, an ally in this case. So, with that, Riss have done his deed. Riss just wants to see the bur world burn. <laughs> and that's how the forest burned out. Well, we're a good way to that. And with that, it's finally the bandit's turn. The first bandit attacking Vlad. The one that is still alive. You see he's pulling out a big hammer. A big, uh, like, a, a mace. And you can, as soon as he strikes, you can use reactive shield, Vodka. Oh, um, does, I assume a 14 don't hit you. Okay, yeah, you see, uh, he swings with his hammer, he missed the second one. Um, miss as well. Honestly, that wasn't good that you used the reactive shield, because then he actually do miss. And the last one, miss as well. You see the bandit, like, seeing his comrade getting a uh, slice and then an arrow in the head. And the explosions around him. And he's like, Aah! Yeah, he's pretty much actually, like, um, um, the gift there right now. <laughs> I don't want to say the world of fire. Yes, a bandit. I mean, you need to start somewhere. <laughs> Uh, once per turn. Yeah, I think it's something like that. So, get banned. <laughs> Is it a bandit like, no. 
the roll was still way below 18, so he didn't hit anyways. It was uh, like uh, on uh, le um, uh, 12. So it wasn't a crit, but it was a crit miss, but it was a miss. And with that, the, the, the archer that shot the first shot is still like dazed, like, oh... Oh, why? Oh, God, why, world? Why have you forsaken me? He's very dramatic. Uh, you see that... Yeah, he's, he's, he's still dazed. Uh, and then there is two bandits rushing towards the wagon and two other bandits uh, with both shooting. Uh, one shooting at... Uh, potato... But I don't think an um, 13 hit. It is truly. I don't think a 13 hit, right? Okay, that miss. Second one, miss. The third one. Oh! It's a crit miss. You see the, the arrow. Uh, he accidentally shoot an arrow into one of his allies that stands a bit away. That went in uh, you see one of the bandits that rush out with a big warhammer you see it's a half orc it's like, Rawr! and the arrow missing uh, just flying above potato's head into his ass you hear about oh, my ass gorba i will kick your ass i'm sorry and uh, you see one of the other ones yeah, the man is seeing Shad Aura is causing this. Beware. Uh, some, an arrow shoots at Kuroki, Black Zero. Does an uh, 15 hit? Is your AC 15 or lower? I don't know. I don't know what you. I don't remember what AC you have. Okay, then the arrow miss. Another arrow shoots. Oh, uh, Kuroki, an arrow actually do hit you. And you take four damage. An arrow strikes into your arm. You're sh feeling how um, the arrow bites in, uh, in between the synthetic skin you have uh, into the inner core of your arm, like the, the um, uh, wiring and stuff like that. Since you're an android and all that. And down to 15 HP. Huh? I mean, you need to be careful. Otherwise you go down completely. That's not good. And... Yeah, you dodge one, but not two this time. And then you see one of these... Uh, mighty warriors charge and strike against Ivan. And Ivan uh, managed to block one strike. And the second do hit. You see a sword uh, striking over his shoulder. It's like, Arr! taking uh, quite a bit of damage, actually. Like, you see a big wound appear on his shoulder. And um, the last bandit is trying to enter, like, he's trying to hammer up there. The one that got shot in the ass is banging on the back door, like, he's trying to open up, like, Arr! And the chat. How are you doing today? Hello, DeLong. Welcome to the game. Uh, where do you get shot to? Uh, you got uh, shot in the arm. In your left arm. You have an arrow sitting in your left arm, like, poor. Now you can now you have a an an uh, combat scar you can brag about. Uh, you can still use your bow. Um, I still have not. I think you need to be critical damage to not be able to. And with that, it's a new round. Potato, now it is your time. Potato, it's your turn again. You're still there. Go forth, potato. Use your potato powers to kill them. Indeed. Oh. Now it's time for the potato to shine. Bearded, indeed. Here we are, bearded. <laughs> I 
I'm with Crusading. Yes, you need to make one uh, final uh, movement and then you can strike. Avenge my wound. <laughs> and if you're going to rage, you have to say it. Yeah, you need to say if you're going to rage. So declare it. Manny holding it in. Hmm. He planning. Man, you know you're a shad barbarian when you don't even when you don't rage, but you're still going to combat like damn. And the long say hello potato. <laughs> but raging is overrated. I mean I guess it could be. <laughs> but yes, so potato, if you want to attack. Roll attack. Yeah, go for it. D twenty plus your strike bonus. What you have is it plus seven? I think. Yeah, uh, you hit. Roll damage, dude. Just ah, oh, thank you the long. <laughs> that looks tasty. <laughs> oh god, yes, it's you all see this little. Potato lash you rushing towards their enemy with an axe, and well, that's still quite quite a lot of good damage there. Um, you st striking the archer that was already wounded, and with that last strike, you actually do fell him. Uh, the axe strike into his mid, into his gut. You're feeling flesh and muscle. And organs tearing apart as the axe bite in deep. And you see the life slowly fades away from the bandit like, as he stumbled back one step, trying to hold in his organs, but just slowly falls together. And you have, Potato. You have one more action. And yes, put, uh, the archer didn't expect to be mauled by a potato this day, but that what happened. Potato mold. That I feel bad for him, but that's what happened. <laughs> uh, sadly, no, because you st you need to make uh, then because you need to pull and then throw. So that's two actions. Um. So you can't, do but you can pull a javelin and have it ready for next round instead, though. So you can pull it, pull it out, and be ready to throw it instantly next round. Uh, it's real. It's a bit hard because it's lots of trees in between, and the bandits seem to be kind of like banging the door. And he's, it's it's a very bad angle to be able to intimidating him. Yes, or no, yeah. Okay, so you pull out the javelin and you have it ready to throw it next round. Because then you don't need to waste and screams like a madman. Yes, in the in the forest, a potato stands screaming. I don't know what a potato sound screams like, but yes, pretend it's very weird and very terrifying. Uh, do you guys like Vladimir Karkov? Do you have a Russian? Yeah, uh, Vla uh, Vodka is playing a dampier named Vladimir Karkov. And with that, it's Potato's turn. And who is after Potato? It's Sam. Sam Boomfinger, what are you doing? Um, uh, what's the position of the bandits? Like near the. Um... The wagons. Uh, you have the the bandit that tried to enter one of the wagons is in the last wagon. You're on the middle wagon, and you're you are sitting on Ivan that have been attacked by one bandit. Mm. Vodka is he Russian? Well, vodka. I think he, vodka is original from Russia, but he lives in what's it California? Live in vodka, or something like that. Uh, can I shoot? Uh, I have I have my sling loaded with yeah ammo with a, like a metal ball. Mm? Can I chuck it in the face of the um, half orc and then with the quick bomber like load and throw? 
give their uh, firecracker in. Uh, you can't uh, use Quick Bomber to load a sling because a sling is still you take one action to load. However, you can uh, use your sling, uh, and then you can use a pull at instant bomb a throw normally. Like you can, like for example, oh. use use a sling on someone else and then throw the bomb on someone else. Okay. Then I shall first sling someone in the face. Oh, what guy is? Multi multiculture. Okay, roll an attack for your sling. Uh, uh, is it still the um, uh, D20 and... Um, yeah, your D20 plus 7, I think, uh, you have. Okay. Yeah. And who are you aiming at? Hmm... Uh, Whoever is the closest, except the... Uh, the guy in the back. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, it would be the guy that's uh, struck um, uh, Iban. Okay. So you can aim at him, yeah? Aim. Well, you hit. You do hit. So um, make, roll damage for a sling. Let's say that's... Um... I think it's normal sling damage is... <clears throat> oh, excuse my French. It's a D6 plus strength, I think. No, not a sling, right? Where is it? Ah, you add half your strength uh, modifier. Well, if you have I, it. I don't have a, a fucking modifier for it. Uh, then you don't add anything to it. So it's just uh, uh, a D6 damage. Shuck! Ah, four damage. That's pretty good. You see, uh, one of these um, uh, sling bullets suddenly strike into the head, like in the forehead of the man, like, and you see he's jolting his bad back. He's like, ah, oh, what the fuck? It's a cretin! What kind of come can I hear the first time? What can he? Um, he's not here right now, but uh, Frogling Nanaya is playing come come, and apparently come come is the sound. Frogs make in in Polish, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what do you do then, Haku? You have two actions left. Uh, then I use the uh, uh, quick bomber to pull out another. Um, what was it called again? The dwarven daisy. Yeah, and check and it. Chuck it at the um, uh, the half orc. Okay. Uh... Roll attack minus five, so it's d20 plus two. And uh, well, swashbucklers are pretty cool class when if uh, that cum cum is, but uh, ooh, that's good. You do hit again. Haku is on the roll here, man. And it's a d6 plus one. Ooh, that's a good damage. That's good damage indeed. You see the ex the dwarven daisy like a uh, uh, small band of firecrackers <laughs> exploding, and half orc is like, Arr! and let's see if he manages his will save. Uh, he's not dazed, but. You see some of his hair. You see like, uh, like skin, like burn, like yeah. He had got him quite a bit burned there. Uh, you still have one action left, uh, Haku. What then do you... I um, um, uh, load the sling again? Yeah, there I can do. Damn, I can do a lot of stuff in one go. Yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> I like this system because it's. Very flexible. You you get you get uh, to do free actions, and it's up to you what you do. And uh, yeah, uh, you load you load your sling. That was your last action, right? Yeah. Okay. Then it's he, like laughs uh, maniacally. <laughs> <or, like, laughs> <laughs> Uh, you all see the little kobold 
sitting on the center laughing as if throwing out another firecracker. And with that, it's Vlad's turn. What does Vlad do? What are you doing? What, what is Vlad doing? Yeah, so, so many pretty, pretty blue. Blue. So many <laughs> pretty boobs. So many pretty boobs. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> ba -ba uh, you're still good, but um, um, uh, you're still good, but um, uh, you don't need much more before it's starting to get too much for you. So you're still okay, but it's uh, okay. Uh, roll attack. <laughs> oh, poor dude. <laughs> Uh, I tried to hit. Oh, oh my god. That's a... Not a crit, almost, but uh, you hit easily. Uh, so roll damage. That is a good... <laughs> Six damage, okay. You see, with a quick slice with a broadsword, you strike into... Uh, the bandit. Uh, blood starting to pull from a wound of his shoulder. Like, ah! You still have two actions, Vodka. What do you do? Yeah, high rolls on hits. He, he's like, okay, roll for it. Is it gonna be another nat 20 here? Uh, oh, God. You actually do. You still hit just... Um... um Precisely, actually. So, roll damage. Oh, you're getting higher and higher damage. Yeah, you see another big slice hit him. And you see the man like, ah, oh, he's still alive, but he have not much left in him. You see that the damp here is, uh, guess what I do now? I guess you strike again. Ah, oh, he goes for it, but you miss. It's precisely... 15 was what you needed, but you miss and uh, the man staggered backwards in pain with blood dripping from his wounds. Man, otherwise, seriously, that's some really... <laughs> Do a sort of maneuver like... V for vodka or Vlad. Uh, and what can alchemists do? Alchemists can do like lots of potions. They can do bombs. They can do like drugs or... Uh, magic tools. They can do a lot of stuff. They are really cool. Uh, Vodka is about 40 feet away from the wagons where he's fighting the last bandit uh, that is in front. I, and that is Vodka's turn. And next is... Who was after that? I think it's Kuroki. Yes, Kuroki. It's your turn. What does Black Zero do? You still have you ha you're hurt in the arm, but you're still able to move and still able to shoot. Want to give him some mutagen? Well, you need to wait for your turn, Haku. Is part pharmacist part demolition expert? Well, yeah, and uh, there isn't uh, a feat that my alchemists have that you can like arm something, like you can arm bombs like to an uh, to, to a, an, an item. So I'm, I, I, my alchemist used his familiar, put an uh, um, uh, uh, like a, a pot cover on it. So he held it up in his head and full with bombs. And then I made him run into the enemies. He died, but it was for glorious. Yes, you can, Haku. You can get familiars. Uh, it's a feat you need to get. Alchemist familiar. Uh, you can do that, Kuroki. You, you give command to your wolf, uh, and your wolf gets uh, uh, two actions to attack. I think it's two actions. You see your wolf uh, lashing out. Uh, who do you tell your wolf to attack? They get an action each turn, yeah? Uh, but if you command them, they get two action, right? That was how I remember it, that... Uh, if you give them uh, command, you get another action. Dang. That's a nice roll. Uh, you see your wolf um, jumps in to bite 
two of your okay so two of the actions so you gave it so you can it can attack two uh and the damage let's see what does the wolf do for damage i'm gonna check it here bit quickly uh, classes, uh, animal companions, uh, wolf, wolf, uh, do, do, do. 1d8 damage plus 2. Yeah, I thought it was uh, uh, one act. If you give them one action, uh, you get it, they get two action. Uh, and mm, I haven't done that, um, DeLong. Can I down a witch cover? I, I haven't seen it. I need to take a look at that. And don't be, don't be, don't worry. I'm curious of, of it. And hello, Fred Boss. Um, uh, I think without command, it does one strike or strike per turn. Yeah, I think it's something like that. So don't worry, DeLong. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, I'm gonna see how much damage your wolf do. It do... 6 plus uh, 2, 8 damage. You see your wolf jumps onto the uh, half-orc that is trying to bash open the door into the wagon. It bites deep into its shoulder. You see blood spilling as the orc... Oh, get this mutt off of me! Um... You still have an um, uh, two actions left, if you want to. I mean, you gave an action to your wolf, and your wolf still strikes another time. Oh my god! Uh, it actually bites two times, hitting, and it do another five damage. Okay, um, you're seeing he beating it. Oh, oh god! Uh, with a final bite, the wolves manage to get its jaw around the neck. And it bites in deep, ripping and tearing into the throat of the half orc that slowly falls back. Uh, with a wolf jumping off. So your wolf did kill uh, 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 Kuroki. Your wolf, with two attacks, killed the half-orc. Thanks to also having the damage from the arrow before, up his ass. And without it, he wouldn't have died. But thanks to his own comrade, he died. Hooray for the uh, half-orc that got killed. Uh, so, Kuroki, you have still have one action. Uh, if you want to. Like, you can use your, like, uh, bow... You know, I tried to watch scenes on which Russia V2 played in. Ah, that sounds interesting. It's a D8 this time. Um, I mean, if you need to roll your attack, if you're going to attack um, Kuroki with your bow. Uh, oh, wait, that D10 um, plus two, was that your attack? Yeah, with a bow. It's a D8. But with a, if you roll ten, you don't you don't hit sadly. Yeah. So you're you're shooting it with an arrow, and the arrow hitting a tree, because uh, after all, it's a forest, lots of trees. It's a bit hard, but your wolf proudly stands howling into the air with uh, uh, blood. From its jaw, tendons in its between its fangs, and that tree took one damage. The tree is not happy. The tree wakes up and like, hey, you motherfucker, bang! Ah! <laughs> uh, I think that is Kuroka's turn, right? I mean, to be fair, though, Kuroka, your wolf murderized the half orc. I can tell you that. Holy crap, that was a strong wolf, a really strong wolf. That's everything. Okay, then it is Riz Burntooth. What do you do, Riz? You take my nature, friends. Ah! 
<laughs> yes, you missed two shots. Yeah, your wolf been amazing, Kuroki. As a good wolf. You know what? I don't know what. Third times the shot. I'm happy you don't give up. Go for it. <laughs> he's aiming for it. He's he's loading. He's shaking and he is throwing. Is any band that stepped out? Uh, yeah, there is one bandit that have stepped out to attack Ivan and is in front of Ivan and Sem. And there is a bandit fighting Vlad that is pretty bad shape. There is an archer that has been gutted. The orc that was in the last wagon, half orc in the last wagon, have died by the wolf. Uh, um, and there is two archers shooting bows into, well, the fray. Not next, okay. Uh, you're shooting the one next to... Yeah, four bandits left. <laughs> four four sad souls. Doomed to probably ending up pretty bad. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, four bandits left, Kuroki. Four. <laughs> uh, you can make one action, move action. Uh, and then f make an attack. So you make one action and you have two attacks, uh, actual attack. Hmm? You're stepping into the a thunderstone. Oh, snicey. You see, you're pulling out a bottle which looks like a little storm cloud within it. And shuck it. Hwa! That's a miss. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's a hit, it's a hit. <laughs> uh, you do hit, and uh, you need to roll damage. <laughs> yeah, that was the best bandit there. He have like 29 in AC. Like <laughs> Fun to spread, I don't want to be in shock. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you're an android. Like, oh, maybe it charge you up like a battery. It's a sound damage, yeah? Uh, sonic damage, I think it's counted, right? Sonic boom! Okay, Guile, take it easy. <laughs> uh, so you roll your damage. It's like, I think it's a d6 plus one, right? Sonic boom, sonic boom, sonic... Oh, okay, d4. <coughs> oh, my, sorry. I got... I'm all, I'm all gassy. Oh, max damage as well. Shkaboom. Um, yeah, it d doesn't it do something else as well? Like deafening or something like that? Uh, Thunderstone. Deafen, yeah. Uh, we didn't... Ten oh. Oh. Sh oh, oh my god. Both got deafened. Because it actually hit the other one with a sound. Not the damage, but uh, since it's within 10 feet. Uh, and both are deaf. You, you see both bandits like, Egon, run for it! What do you say, Steve? Ah! <laughs> this is my booms. Yeah, one of them like get hurt and like bleeding a little bit from his ear. And the other one is like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, you're not. You're too far away, Croak, to be affected by it. Uh, you still have one action, to put, uh, Monty. Dude, I feel. Yeah, you can do. I feel bad for this bandits, bad. I shouldn't, but I kind of feel because they getting they're getting so mangled, man. Oh God, tangle foot bag. Oh, they ain't leaving. Uh oh shit, tangle foot. What did it do? Ah, that 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 sadly miss actually just by one. Yeah, it's a spider web. Yeah, I, I remember something like that. Uh, sadly, you don't. Uh, you missed a bomb. It hits a tree that is now stuck. You have stuck the tree at least. The tree is like, oh no, I can't move anymore. Damn it! 
is a very standing still tree right now. Yeah, you won't need to be worried that the tree is moving. <laughs> Riz air swings. Ah! Yeah, uh, uh, we can use that as an excuse. Your 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 self or sensitive ears are like. Do the bombs have the usual multi attack penalties? Um, multi attack? Yeah, they do get minus five. Um, so since it's an a attack, you do get. Oh, so that means it would have been uh, uh, minus. It's a crit miss. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, it would be a crit miss then. No! It's not because it's it's not uh, minus it, ten. Yeah, so it's not a crit miss. You're still uh, uh, not minus ten, so you're still just missing. So still, it's not a crit miss. Luckily, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah for that. Uh, <coughs> with that, <coughs> it's a bad. It's turn. <coughs> Um, let's see. There are four left. The one that is uh, fighting Ivan, seeing that things are not going so well like they hope for, is like... Uh, and the two archers, like, trying... To, you hear how they're shouting to each other uh, about uh, covering, but they don't seem to hear each other because they are deaf at the moment. Uh, Abayo... <laughs> Another day will be, and the one fighting vodka is very wounded. And he, you see, he actually turned the one fighting vodka or Vlad turns around and start to staggering away, limping away into the forest. All his actions in front. Oh yeah, you have. Wait, do you have? Um. Uh, um. Do you have that? Uh, what the fuck is it called? Attack of opportunity. Oh, you have. Okay, yes, you can attack him. <laughs> uh, so roll an attack. It's sadly a miss. No, a fighter gets attack on uh, opportunity. He's a fighter. They. No, you actually do get it. It says here class feature uh, attack or opportunity. Uh, so yeah, uh, but yeah, you're you're trying to hit him, but he miss. Yeah, lucky you, but it still miss, and the bandit limping away. Uh, one bandit fighting Ivan. That oh yeah, I forgot to use. They they gonna attack, but they seem to be missing. Yeah, that's man. You've been so lucky on your attacks, but this time, ah. Oh. Uh, and the bandit strikes, fighting the <laughs> fighting even, and the archers are shooting. Uh, that's not a hit. That's not a hit. No. Uh, you see the archers shooting, but they. Oh my god! They. This is horrible. Oh god. Archers shooting into the wagons. You see some arrow hit the tree, some arrow hits uh, a wagon, but they don't hit any per people. And with that, it's a new turn. It's Potato. What do you do? It's Potato's turn. Hello. <laughs> I exist again. Indeed, you pop up. You pop up in. Uh, well. Uh, true vodka. He had some nice rolls on his attacks, but uh, he don't do much damage, sadly. Started with a d20, went downhill. A. Uh, yeah, but you still have two archers nearby you can throw at. Well, that's that's pretty. That's a pretty good dam amount of damage. Um, the two archers, well, you see one of them, because they're kind of like in a line for you, are to your, if you rush, to your right, about 20 feet. 
So you can throw your javelin at them. And then charge in. Yeah, uh, it's the first archer, so roll an attack. It's going to be interesting to see. The little potato leshy throwing a javelin. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vodka have no problem to chase after that guy, though, because it's half movement speed for him for, for being damaged. I put that on him, I feel like that's natural. So, yeah, uh, Potato. So, yeah, a D20 plus 7. Oh, it's a crit. It's a crit. So, haha. <laughs> uh, roll damage twice two. Potato. Yeah, these bandits are getting, well, 10 damage. Bro. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, uh, vodka, you roll lowest possible damage on your crit. Yes. <laughs> Uh, still, 10 damage. Uh, you see the javelin vine, uh, well, vining, uh, hissing through the air, like... Pshh. I don't know what that is for a thing. Uh, he, don't throw a snake. And uh, the javelin launched into the side of one of the archers. They're like... Ah! Ah! It's still alive, but pretty badly hurt. And you can make... Yes, you have two actions. You need one action to get close, and you can still attack. Death and pierce, indeed. Bad times. Uh, I think rage consume an action. Let's see here. I'm not since I'm not. Uh, it's my brother that played the barbarian. Uh, let's see. Raj. Uh, ba da ba ba ba. Doesn't uh, and welcome back, uh, uh, Kuroki. Okay, uh, Saba is my gu guiding god here, and says it takes one action to enter rage, but after that it doesn't take any. Yeah, rage is an action indeed, as uh, Yuki says. And run for your okay. You raging you. You hear how the little potato leshy raging and then charging as Archer, and that is Potato's turn. <laughs> the poor Archer is terrified as a demonic little angry potato rushing towards him. Terrifying. Oh man. Dude, this is terrifying stuff. <laughs> that is crazy. Doesn't take any to maintain, yeah. Bandit blood! Oh god, he's so he's so hungry for blood. And you can't as long as there is uh, still enemies and stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, it will slowly ebb away. Uh, and then it is Sam's turn, aka Haku. It's your turn. Go for it, boy. Spot for the blood god. He has spot for the spot god. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shoot. Sling. Yeah. You still have the bandit in front of like fighting even. Even is like oh, ping ping ding ding. Okay, I'm gonna shut the uh, ammo in his fucking head. Okay, roll attack. Ten rounds then. Mm. Yeah, uh, one round is. Uh, it's about ten rounds, yeah. <laughs> oh, you do hit! Nice roll. So roll damage. 1d6 plus 1. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you roll your... The sling damage here. 6 damage. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. You see a second stone... Uh, hitting him in the head. You see he like... Uh, He's not dead, but he obviously had the world's worst migraine ever. Um, uh, you see, like, he's stumbling a little bit. 
Yeah, reverse, indeed, reverse vodka. You have, still have two actions, though, Haku. What do you do? I'm gonna load the swing and shoot him again. Okay, you can do that. Uh, minus five on the attack, though. So it's uh, d20 plus two this time. Oh, dude. Man, if you hit again, I mean, I, I, he, he doesn't have much left in him. So, yeah, d10, d20 plus two. What the fuck are you doing, cat? Get no, you, I didn't get you at all. You did, and uh, this is main dam. Uh, no, you don't do a d20 damage. It's only for your attack. Yeah, it's your hit chance. Uh, the d6 and d8 is for damage. Oh, you hit. That's a beautiful hit, man. <laughs> uh, roll damage. It's still the same. Damage, yeah. yes. The damage don't change. It's just a uh, chance to hit. Because you, it's it's like you really quick trying to attack as much as possible, so you aim get a little bit off. Uh you see the second one hits. It doesn't do as much damage. Uh, you see, I can say that he's he's like, uh, he, he have like very very little health left. So he's stumbling like. Uh, Maybe I broke his nose or something. Yeah, uh, you can say blood dripping from his uh, nose. And uh, you hear Riz. Maybe we should catch him. Oh, good idea, good idea. Good idea. Uh, with that, it is Vlad's turn. What do you do, Vlad? You have one that bandit that is trying to run away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to... Now it's been so much blood. So you need to roll uh, your will save. So you don't go frenzy. Uh, was it? What was the difficulty? Was it fifteen? Because if fourteen, yeah, then you manage to control. You feel within you a gnawing hunger when you smell all this sweet, sweet blood, but you still manage to control the curse within your veins, and you don't jump after and trying to suck out the blood of the ne the nearest person this time. That's good. Yeah, Vlad, let's say Vlad had a little bit of, like, a blood problem. He's a bit anemic. Okay, uh, you need to make... Uh, let's see, he made... Yeah, you need to make one at... Um... Oh. And, uh, oh, it's a net one. Oh. As he was trying to step to... Uh... In this group, I do like this. If it's a nat 1 or a nat 20, I add a little bit special to it, you know? It's not just a miss. You made a great mistake. Well, he's a dampier. Uh, what happened is that uh, as you s start to move to swing your sword against the bandit that limping away, you accidentally steps on organs of the one that have been, well, blood and gore, on the ground from the previous bandit that died. And you actually slip. So you fall onto one of your knees. With one hand uh, on warm blood. I actually want you to make another roll. Because you suddenly got even more blood. Um, splashing around you. When you're going down on one knee. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Ex expertly failed. Dead no. <sighs> he still managed... Uh, you're still, you're feeling like, yeah, it, you're feeling the gnawing hunger, but you still manage to defeat that beast. Um, uh, not directly, Kuroki. It needs to be quite a lot of blood. And right now, it, it, since there is literally one gutted corp, yeah, Vlad is holding in there. And the curse is... You're feeling the curse boiling in you. But you still manage to control the beast. And... You still have two actions. You can still make a move. You need to move to catch up to the bandit. And make your attack again. So... Yeah. You're holding strong. Yes. 
you're getting up and uh, moving your final steps to reach him. I will allow that. Not sure if Android flu will be similar. Well, that's true. Uh, yes, you have vodka. It's still a mi uh, minus five on the attack. Ah, sadly, you don't hit. But you don't fail this time. Uh, well, critically fail. Uh, instead, you just barely... You feel like... Ah, man, if you had only a few inches more, you would definitely slice up his neck. So, yes, sadly, you don't, but you still... Uh, I can tell you this. The bandit turns around a bit and looking back to see Vlad. And he sees a terrifying sight of something furiously that controlling the, the, cre the creature within... He's terrified over seeing Vlad chasing after him. I can say that much. And that's your turn, yes. Uh, next is Kuroki. What does Kuroki do? Vlad is holding in there. I'm. I'm. I, it is poggers to see. While Tripping Slip, indeed. <laughs> he do. He do. But honestly, it. While he's uh, controlling his blood curse, like like a big Slenderman in the ice, a Canadian Slenderman, you know, a Canadian Slenderman, uh, ice hockey, like woohoo! Uh, okay, Potato is charging into the two archers remaining. Um, the one. Character the one bandit fighting Ivan is nearly dead by Sam, and the last bandit fighting Vlad is running as, as much as he possibly can, even with his wounds right now. So you have two archers, one archer that is badly hurt, one archer that is not damaged at all. You can try to attack him if you want to. So you can you can try to shoot him shoot at him. Yep, yeah, one have its a uh, javelin in this side. Okay, uh, your wolf starts to move. Uh, so you can, since you're giving it command, you can, uh, for example, make it move and attack. Instead of just moving one, uh, one round this time. Oof. Um, your wolf don't hear you. <laughs> your wolf st start to move, and then it's like turning around, looking at you, very confused. It's a very confused doggo right now. The wolf is like wolf could. <laughs> the wolf is like what? Uh, the dog that uh, oh yeah the dog kind of like yeah stops in the mid track looking at you like <laughs> the poor dog doesn't understand what's going on it's like what the fuck happened guys what should I do scared of fireworks again probably uh, so yeah that would happen it it it's on its turn it started to move and then it's like turn around looking at you very confused yeah. More than scared, he's very confused. And it was not that was the pug. Oh yeah, uh, the pug was hit in the head by a stone and had fainted. It was a random stone that fell from the sky, hit uh, body in the head, and body fainted. Like, oh. <laughs> Thank you, Matthias, for subscribing. But, uh, but yes, uh, you still have two actions, Kuroki. You can still shoot with your bow. That's sad, indeed, indeed. The big bombs. But that's bound to happen with the two crazy alchemists in the neighborhood. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> and yes, uh, Potato with his bow. Uh, no, you don't roll damage, uh, Crook. You need to roll uh, attack first. A d20 plus, I think it was 7. 
Because I don't think it uh, the command takes any of minus on your attack. I don't think. Since it's not an attack per se. So it's a d20 plus uh, 7 on your first attack. Da -da -da -da. Oh god, these bandits are getting so literally... L they, they're getting severely destroyed. You, Okay, uh, if you want to use... You can uh, vodka uh, roll. It, 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 it is a hit. So if you want to, you can roll damage now, though. Okay, uh, Kuroki. So it's a hit. You roll attack. Uh, well, damage, I mean. Which is a d8. Yeah, you can, you can just copy the text uh, for sure. It's a, it, And don't worry if it's confusing, Kuroki. Uh, it's nothing to be worried about. It's, it's always a little bit confusing in the beginning. But that is why we're playing like this. I want to give you guys a good chance to learn and get into the game. Uh, now it's a d8. Uh, you do a d20 when you're trying to hit. And when you hit, if you hit, uh, you do a d8 damage. So that's how it works. Yes? d8 will determine the damage. Yes? So uh, you roll a d8. That's good, Kuroki. Let's go. Let's roll. Let's kill. So it is... Free damage. Okay. Uh, you see an arrow strikes into the bandit. Uh, the, ar the, ar the one archer that already hurt, you see an arrow strikes into it. She'll stab stagger back a bit. Like, ah! Ah! Um, you still have one attack if you want to do that, uh, Kuroki. Though it's minus 5 or plus 2. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, Kuroki. It's up to you what uh, does uh, Black Zero do. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, you need to roll again a d20 plus 2 this time. Do 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 do. They're gonna see if... I think you need a spade. Yeah, like, uh, just copy what Vodka wrote there, that T20 roll there. And don't worry if it takes... Oh, you hit again! Roll a D8 damage again. Yeah, seriously, this is... That's good rolls here. With a bow, yes. So a D8 damage. Yeah. We got two arrows into the target. Twang, twang. You quickly... Uh, a D8, yes. You roll again. A D8. Uh, with two quick successions, you, you pull first one arrow striking and the second arrow striking. And that's enough to send the bandit in a second arrow to his chest. And he's staggering back, looking like, why did I choose this life? And collapses as Potato raging in like... Rrr! And that is uh, Kuroki's turn. Wait, this means that Kuroki had the highest kill count so far, because Kuroki have killed three people. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, the kill count is on Kuroki's side. <laughs> Come on, man. You you other guys need to step up a bit. Uh, with that, it is Riss. Monty, what does Riss do? Well, it might he might have. Potato have done quite chunky damage. Yeah, that's true. Being rain means less moon, but you don't get the same attack well damage bonus, so you get that luck. Riss pulls out another alchemist fire. The goblin, chuckling for himself, I imagine. 
uh, smell of soft as you pull out and uh, a little veil of flaming fire within. Oh, he gotta set that boy alight. Uh, roll attack, Monty. And it's a hit! Roll damage! Finally, the damage comes! Now it's now it's ba pain burn train coming here. Uh, you see the lots of fire exploding as the alchemy fire explodes in the archer's face. <laughs> you hear him scream a little bit of pain. Oh, so you have burn it feed. So I deal one more. Okay, okay. So it's a D four or is it a D six? Uh, plus two. That's nice. A D eight. Oh boy. Ooh, that's gonna. Now that's gonna hurt. Is it? Is it a D eight plus? Uh, uh, let's see. Equipment. Items. Bombs. One D eight uh, plus two. With one per yeah, because the one persistent fire damage continues on to next round, so um, it's um, that's a good so that should be one d six. Well, one d eight plus three then. The fun of level one, everything hurt indeed. That's true. That's true, Mir. It's pain. Oh no, not the Indiana Jones thing. Uh, Fire damage gain, stat burn damage equal to half spell level or one quarter item level. Mean. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. So roll your damage, Monty. And that's some. That's gonna be some juicy damage there, with flames and fire. And uh, a D eight plus two, yeah. <laughs> you came. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh you see flames fla flare up. You see them bandit like Argh! flames burning into his flesh. Uh, he's still alive, but that was a lot of that. Yeah, that hurt. Uh, that hurt a lot. Uh, so you see his hair is on fire. He's like Argh! dropping his bow to make it pretty murder. Okay. Uh, you guys see how it's not just a normal like orange red flames, but in bright colors, like whoosh, very pretty. As the man burns, burn bandit, burn indeed, Fred. <laughs> uh, okay, go, uh, rice cooker is done. Don't worry, Kuroki, go for it. Yeah, classy, indeed. It's a very classy murder here, and you still have two actions left, uh, Monty. It's beautiful. Reason is an entertainer, Mr. Vla I don't, I'm sorry, give me Riz. But yes, uh, Riz, the entertainer. Oh, God, I love... I, honestly, I like this group, I will say. Uh, you still have two actions, though, Monty. Are you... F it's beautiful. Oh, God. That's a horrible gif, man. Melting! Melting! Uh, pussy lost. Yeah, you can do that, Monty. You have also. Yeah. Sling. Sling gang, you know? Sling shady. <laughs> Same here. So you can sl <laughs> Yeah, you don't. But I have no strings, my bombs do more work. Yeah, that makes sense, so. Uh, roll. Roll an attack, minus five, though. But what's good with the sling, you can throw the bombs even further. Yeah, that's the, the that is why sling is added to it, because it's a very good way to, like, get in an extra bomb further, you know? So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you're pulling out the sling, yeah. Okay, yeah, that counts as two, yeah. Uh, so you have loaded your sling for uh, next turn. 
Uh, and with that, it is the bandit's turn. One bandit facing Vlad, or rather running away. And since he's within reach again, and he tried to run Vodka, you get another attack of opportunity. Roll an attack. Oh, he's already on it. And he hits. Oh god, roll damage. <laughs> Six damage. Well, uh, it's not much, but it's enough. With a final pierce... With the final thrust of your sword, you pierce through his sh back, through out through his chest. You see, he's like his bloody hand gripping the blade, like in confusion. Like, what is this for a thing? As you slowly pull it out, and he's falling to the ground, dead. Hello, Shanley. What the fuck are you doing, cat? What are you doing, Shanley? Shouldn't be up here running. And with that, the bandit just um, dead. I'm still... <laughs> no, sadly not, potato. Uh, you see... Uh, uh, Ivan clubbing down the bandit in front of him. Knocking him out. You see, the bandit that had been fighting and literally been worn down by Sam. Is collapsing. And... What are... Shanli, what are you doing? Ow, 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 my shoulder, ow. Silly cat. Uh, so yes, that bandit collapsed and uh, even holds him, hold him. And last is one bandit. And it is the one in the forest. Archer that have been in, is on fire. And is walking around like... Aah! And with that, it's a new round. It's Potato. Potato, it's your turn. What are you doing, cat? Yep. Um, you need one move, one move, and then you can attack twice. Raging. Finish the boon, boy. Yeah, Reese, Reese is cheering. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, roll attack, potato. Because you rush up to him, raging. This potato raging. Like... Uh, I mean, that's true. Oh, it's a hit. Roll damage. I'm sure the people in the cafe think we're well adjusted, kind of did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I can mention that, like, the, the ones driving, like, Chris, have, like, hide behind the wagon. Like, they're like, ah! Because that is uh, obviously what your guys are hired for, to deal with bandits and problems like this. What do you roll for? Yeah, that... Is that your damage? 25? Blam! He got hit by a nuke. <laughs> the bandit got hit by a nuke. Like, kaboom. Pram. He got hit by Saitama's punch. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy moly. Yes, the no, 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 we aren't wrong. He got hit by a nuke there. Yeah, he did get... Uh, Yes. Uh, Oh my god, that bandit, man. Yes, max damage monkas, indeed. Uh, you see, you all see, well, most of you see at least, how this little potato leshy rushing forward in a giant instinct rage with his massive axe, easily uh, seeing this man shouting and screaming in pain as he's in fire, with the axe literally chopping off his head and when one of his arms in one fell swoop, slash blood splurting all over the area as the corpse stumble and just fall to the ground and with that um, there are a lot of well um, all bandits are dead except one yeah well, except one that is unconscious now but uh, yeah hey, by the way Lalo hmm? uh, since the encounter is sort of over yeah? can Sam uh, bind uh the unconscious guy. Yes. No. Don't potato. I want to kill it. Uh, uh, no. I mean. Okay. Uh, you, you see. Uh, you need to roll an attack. Anyone that wants to stop him can roll an athletic check. To grab uh, potato. Otherwise he just. 
running towards the man. Potato Lily burst like the bandits indeed. <laughs> and it is Sabbath. It's a good sub alert. I, of course, needed to use the one commission you got there with uh, Astolfo and Darius. And I added the sound effect to it. <laughs> They make my will say every turn. Um, uh, for now, you don't need to do it because you have now control over it. Uh, if it came more blood, though, it would need. But right now, you're like in in your state of sin. Yes, uh, technically, uh, I mean he's unconscious, but he's still there. It's more like if you want to. So yeah, it's up to you pretty much this time. Is uh. Shonkers, that's furious. Is he that savage? Will he do it? That's up to you. I got okay, okay. Uh, you will be able to rush using two. St uh, by now, we say you get one. Um, uh, before you see anyone that wants to stop him can roll at a flat deck, otherwise, he will run in and shop against the man. Uh, yeah, potato, roll and attack if you want to hit. Uh, well, if you want to attack him. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. He hits. Wait, uh, is this something? Yeah, uh, can roll damage, potato. Oh my god, and he rolled so high damage. The guy was almost already... D yeah, you guys see how he's... Uh, even is holding the man, like it's his shoulder. And you see just how the axe literally split him at the waist. Snapping through spine, cartilage, everything. Like, uh, seeing you, anything is like sliced. And yeah, he's dead. He's... <laughs> And standing there is a furious bloody. Yeah, he's sleeping forever now. Uh, and yeah, Riss, we could have got the information, but sadly, he's gone now. <laughs> oh my lord. Uh, the last bandit is now dead. All bandits are done, so. The little and scream. <laughs> Uh, so there's more blood. Uh, yeah. Um, though you don't need to roll yet until you get closer, at least. <laughs> Tip your enemies of the wagon. <laughs> to give wide birth. <laughs> Breath. I. Ah, uh, yeah. <gasps> uh, you see, like um, the wagon is. Wagons are pretty har har unharmed. There's some arrows in it, but other than that, um, but put, most to put out the alchemist. Yes, you move out, and with that, the bandits are now decimated. You guys have uh, really, truly, really show your worth. You see, uh, Captain Silvervail. She did have literally been sitting on the wagon, uh, just looking at you guys. Uh, not really at the bandits, but more at you guys and what you've been like capable of. Uh, and uh, not approving. Much good. You truly are worthy to be part of the mercenary corps. Loot the body. You can keep all the loot you gather. Anything you find on them belongs to you. You divide it between yourselves. Uh, you see. You, you see she's um, jumping down the wagon. And we leave in 10 minutes. Patch up your wounds. And uh, then we be gone. There were no survivors. I hope the legendary shit goblin slays the hot potato. This group. Well, never say never. The car probably... And there are items left behind the bandits. There is a few weapons. Um, few... Uh, small patchy leather hide armors. Uh, that will wipe down his sword and try to keep the blood. That's the center friend. Yeah, uh, you see, Ivan is like, don't worry, my friend. Uh, Pat putting a hand on his shoulder, and you see glowing light healing. 
Uh, is there anyone else that need some cleric healing? And yes, um, I think this is a uh, perfect time as well to actually starting to cut down on the RP for today. Uh, you guys now have gotten kind of uh, an idea how the combat system works in this game. Uh, and no, he didn't do much at all, actually. Uh, the main reason is because I was kind of focused on what the, you guys did. So he was mostly there uh, supporting you guys. I want to mock you. Well, you can do that. But you know what they say. Never mock the healer. <laughs> and yeah. That is for now, guys. You have done your first D&D um, Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure. Se um, session 0. Uh, if it doesn't heal me later, I will cut him down. I mean, he will heal you. He will help. That is what he's here for. Uh, and you guys have done uh, your deeds. Honestly, this went uh, surprise. I didn't expect you guys to stomp the bandits like this, to be honest. Uh, want to see more? Indeed, nods, nods. That was great. And uh, yeah, once you rest, uh, you get. So, killing poor bandits for shame. Indeed, indeed. We can medicine. Yes, those, those that have medicine can use medicine checks for healing and stuff like that. And those that have like cleric or potions can heal. Uh, we're gonna see if we can do play next Saturday, but I'm gonna check uh, for sure so we can play. Uh, other than that, I will write in Discord when it will be next time. And uh, hopefully most of you can be joining there again as well. Because we still have a lot of things planned ahead. There are lots of stuff going on. And yeah. Uh, so that, thank all of you for being joining for today's sessions. And for everyone watching on Twitch, I'm terrible sorry if I'm slow to p talk with people on Twitch. But <laughs> uh, thank everyone. And see you next time.